Hello, welcome back. Last time I did the first half of the roleplay level, and it turns out it takes a little bit longer to go through than some of the others, so I'm going to do the second half today. Uh, got, I think, five more rooms to get done. Let's start here, where I get to play as a Slayer. Slayer's fun because uh, it gets to kill with both body and weapon. That's unique. No other role gets to do the, both of those things. Though, surprisingly, it turns out it's actually harder than I would have thought to uh, build rooms around that mechanic. I got to do this just a little bit in Suit Pursuit when Beether had the Slayer suit on. Um, anyway, uh, one more room built around that. So, uh, the main action in this room is to step onto a pressure plate without releasing it. And as a Slayer, you can do that because you can kill the monster, the Water Skipper, here. Uh, on top of that pressure plate. However, I can't just do that because I can't walk up to a water skipper. Okay, so I can do this, but since I haven't touched the... So I was stealthed when I started because I hadn't made a kill yet. Uh, I can do that, then what I was trying to say is the water skipper will kill me if I do that. But anyway, if I've touched a power token so I can actually light that fuse, um, then uh, the water skipper will kill me if I approach it uh, in any other way. If I set off these bombs now, uh, the explosion is inescapable, so I would just die. Anyway, so, uh, this room is about stepping on that without, um, without it ever releasing. But there's a bunch of stuff in the way first. Obviously, as a slayer, um, I have to have a thing where I double kill a bunch of stuff, because that's fun. This is kind of a magic sequence here, um... That evil eye stepped on that, which lit the fuse, and that bomb is going to go off and blow up the entire room if I don't quickly get off this pressure plate and then back on to close that door. Uh, so the sequence of moves I did there is how that's possible. Gotta kill all the evil eyes, because they will also weigh down the pressure plate. Anyway, uh, so that's done. Got myself a power token. With the power token, I can now light fuses. So I could try this. Um, if that gets released, there's nowhere I can hide, I blow up with those bombs, no matter what I do. So, um, I also drop trapdoors, that doesn't really matter particularly. But being able to light a fuse lets me do stuff like this. Combat feels kinda weird as a slayer, but it's neat. <laughs> so what's a slayer with a stick like? This section of the room is kind of a tutorial about that. Uh, some people get a little bit stuck here and don't uh, don't advance directly into this hallway with the stick. I can keep my hook, which is basically like a sword, and do this if I want to. It's not useful though. If I take the stick, what happens here is I step into the tar baby and stun him for a turn. Then I can use my body kill to kill him and stun the next one in line. So this whole mechanism here. Um, shows that uh, that it's safe to do that. Then it's just a simple matter of using the Wraithwing to set up Wraithwing that I retrieved from behind the uh, Tar Mother to set up a situation where I can do this. I stun the Water Skipper so I can step next to it without it killing me and then I can step onto its pressure plate. So just this bomb blows up those, Rattlesnake and Wraithwing. And it's done! Victory! <laughs> for the Empire! Victory for the Empire! So that room was cool. It's actually one of the simpler ones on the level, if you uh, if you know the tricks. Not too much to the execution, really. This one over here. This was supposed to be a complicated room. Unfortunately, this is one of the most broken rooms in the hold. Uh, I'll just do it the normal way, because that's the way that I know. Um, but yeah, this is the one I'm saddest about breaking. <laughs> I wish there were a way that I could update it to fix the um, the problem with it. All uh, right, so let's let's start over. So I start as a rock golem. Uh, rock golem cannot kill the construct. I could step here uh, and get to that orb, but that doesn't really do me any good, and it locks this out of here. Uh, right, there's a lot going on in this room. Uh, got a speed potion here, the only speed potion in the hold, I believe. Bunch of passages over here, evil eye on a pressure plate, so you can be a rock golem, a stalwart, and a puff at various times. This water skipper opens that and closes that. That orb opens the speed potion. This needs to be lit by the omplic beam to kill that evil eye. 
Um, and this section of the room is actually responsible for the way that it's broken. But anyway, let's just do the room first. Uh, I have to choose whether to kill the goblin or the omplik to get things started. Uh, the goblin is useless. The omplik is the one you need. So you kill the goblin, then lead the omplik around a little bit. And you might notice this orb does some stuff. But that orb is actually just in the way. I can't access this power token until I'm a stalwart and can blow these soldier horns. I can't be a stalwart until this orb is gone. So, uh, the Altlik can helpfully break the orb for me. Thanks, Altlik. Orb's gone. And then he needs to get onto this pressure plate. Or at least be in the general area and look at the mirror. Like that. So yeah, getting the Omplik to make an orthogonal step in here is actually slightly complicated. Uh, it requires assistance from the Construct. The main action in this room is blowing these soldier horns while there is no threat visible to a soldier other than the Water Skipper immediately in front of them. So what I actually have to do to prepare the room... Here, I'll show you what happens if I don't do this. Um... If I just... Well, I mean, if I'm not doing that, then there's no reason not to do this. Wait, how do I... Oh, right. Like that. Uh, so, Construct, get off me. He's not going to get off me, but maybe I can somehow survive like this. Not really. Okay. Let's keep some distance here. That didn't keep any distance. Neither did that. Okay, right. Constructs. Kind of a pain to work with sometimes. Here, you stay. You stay there. I'm gonna be a stalwart. So as a stalwart, um, I could kill all the stuff. I could kill this water skipper and lock that in there. Uh, oh, I can't drop that ice yet. Not until I get a power token. Anyway, uh, so what you can do here is based on the way you face and which horn you blow, you can get soldiers to face a certain way when they step onto Ormites. Just like guards, a soldier, if it wants to make a killing blow, doesn't really realize it's disarmed. Since this guy thinks his sword is here, he wants to kill this water skipper, he's going to step into this spot. And the water skipper kills him and steps onto that pressure plate. So the water skipper actually moves, um, since it has a target. So that's great for those two, but for this one... Uh, you can't do that kind of trick, because he'll just actually kill the Water Skipper. However, that soldier has no target, uh, so he'll just stand there until he does. And everybody stands here so that I can get at the power token. Can I do this, or will he move? I can do that because I move first. Yep. So I got a power token. Uh, he moved, that's fine, don't need him anymore for the power token. Um, anyway, but what I did earlier causes problems. Um, I'm actually not sure why I did it this way. <laughs> I guess I just wanted to demonstrate. Anyway, so Construct drops this thin ice. That removes soldier visibility to the Water Skipper. And then the Construct is useful in breaking the Omblik's line of sight. Because something needs to step in it, into it for just one turn and then step out. So if I stand right exactly here, that's how that happens. He steps forward one, looks at the mirror, and is in this isolated place. He can get out, but to a soldier it looks like he's inaccessible. Uh, which is actually true. Until the Omplik moves. Uh, so yeah, Construct. You can just sit there for now. Or maybe, I don't know, here-ish. That sounds fine. So we do this dance again. Whoa! Or maybe die. That's fine, that soldier has to die. I totally did that wrong. Face this way. Face that way. Face that way. So then while that guy is sitting there, I have a race to get here and back. He comes out to kill this construct. Hey, this is a problem. I can't have you sitting there like that. I actually have to pull that construct off him. 
because if he does that, um, oh, am I in an unwinnable situation here? Because I can't catch up to the construct quick enough. He's no, no, no. This is fine. He can sit there because as soon as I break this wall, he sees the evil eye and goes for it instead. So that evil eye released this plate, which gives me access to the puff. I don't need the puff yet, but I could be a puff if I wanted to. Um, okay, so interesting nuance of soldiers. Let me see what happens when I do this. I'm going to let that construct go for him. Well, he kills him for one thing, because he didn't turn quick enough. Notice how he turned counterclockwise there. With the construct to his... Um, to his west when he's facing east he wants to turn around this way weird thing though if it's an omplik looking at him and he just wants the omplik beam to get off of him he turns the other way strange behavior and of course this puzzle takes advantage of such strange behavior naturally uh, let's see hey omplik why don't you make him turn there and hit that orb do that one more time and Oh, right, I need you for a moment, Mr. Omplik. You can still be useful. The soldier now can just keep the construct dead. What opens this? That, right. Okay, so Omplik, you just look at that mirror again. Somewhere, somehow. How about, like... Uh, let's see, how do I make you... No, no, I missed. There. All right, construct uh, soldier will keep the construct dead. Uh, his job is done. I can take a speed potion if I want to. I don't need it yet. Uh, I'm already a stalwart. I need to. No, I do need the speed potion yet. Um, because I need to be a puff and kill this water skipper so that that opens. So I can step next to it on a half turn. Also, got to kill these by the way. Might as well do that now. Then, as a stalwart again, I can make the omplik do my bidding and light this fuse. Eventually, there we go. Fuse is lit. Evil Eye died. Room is clear. So, uh, you may have noticed. One thing wrong with all the stuff that I did there. That power token's useless. <laughs> you don't actually need it for anything. Because, uh, in fact, you don't even need the speed potion. There's some way to... Right. If you'd skip the power token, um, you don't need anything standing on these doors, so the soldiers can just kill the water skippers directly. You can kill this one whenever you want and um, do the rest of the room skipping this entire sequence that the whole room is kind of built around. The reason that that happened is because late in the architectural process, I decided for some reason to replace the mechanism I had up here, which involved bumping a seating beacon, which you had to have a, a power token for. I replaced it with this thing so you'd have to keep the omplik alive for longer. I wish I hadn't done that, because that kind of breaks the entire room, because you can skip this whole mechanism. Anyway, what I did there is basically how the room is supposed to play out. Now, um, you might have noticed that this orb does stuff. If I go through... Whoa! Fascinating. Changing to a throw roll does not perform a stab, even though he gets a sword. <laughs> if I go through there, stab that with a stalwart, then I can go in here and get to a secret room. You can actually enter this as a stalwart if you want, and uh, be unstealthed and kill some seep. So of course there had to be a room where the player rolled a seep. This has a challenge. Uh, clear the room while wearing a citizen costume. Yep. So yeah, two rolls here. Uh, seep and citizen. So if I don't enter as a stalwart, um, I have a few more things to kill up front, but that's fine. This is where you're supposed to start. Kill the seep, and you unstealth, and stuff happens. Because there's really not much else to do. I can turn the Mimic, but he can't move anywhere. So I kill that Seep. Now I need to go hide in a place like this to survive. 
Uh, ooh. Actually, wait, I needed... I need this guard's assistance, that's right, because I can't really survive that on my own. But if I do something like this, I can get him to do my killing for me. Then he can kill that. And um, it is possible to get him to stab this wall, I found out at some point. Um, I think he would just do it like this, or like... Uh, actually, I don't know how that would happen. Somehow it can happen. Anyway, um, uh, that's not what was intended. Uh, he stabs that, which is fine. That lets me get to the power token. And I wanted to actually break that orb. So you have to think of walls as floors and floors as walls in this room. Uh, I've stepped on a power token, which allows me to do stuff like this. Uh, carefully. I can sort of spool these out in a killable formation like that. Ooh. Uh, the guard can still be useful. Well, okay, he's kind of in my way right now. Um, there's a move sequence here that lets me get enough distance on him to light this fuse and blow up that wall. Then he's going to have to use this orb to let the mimic out. The reason for that is because a seep... Uh, this seep is kind of trapped now. He needs some assistance to get out and put on a, on a different costume to be able to traverse stuff again. So that's where the citizen comes in. I have to carve this carefully to leave myself a passage back out. Uh, because this locks me in. After that's blown up, I'm basically isolated here, so I have to be able to cross this. Guard dies in hot tile. Uh, let's see, I've left this in such a state that it should be possible if I break that orb. Um, Alright, Mimic is there, sure. Should be possible to get that challenge. Uh, oh boy. I'm under a bit of threat here. Okay, so seep, um... Oh, how's this going to work? Sure, this is fine. I'm going to leave you alive. You will be the guy that I kill while wearing a citizen costume. Alright, so Mimic pushes Seep onto platform. Seep, player role Seep don't actually die outside walls. Um, I could be pushed onto a floor, but I can't go anywhere from there. <laughs> it even bumps as if it's a wall. Uh, but on a platform, if I'm bumping against a platform edge, I can actually move the thing. This is kind of bordering on a bug, but I'm just calling it a quirk of player roles. Seep and water skippers can move uh, platforms across pits if they're at the edge of them. Anyway, so I'm a citizen now. I, would, I love my work. She loves her work. <laughs> uh, and then as a citizen, I can kill this final seep using a mimic. Uh, somehow. Run. There we go. Just wanted to hear her voice. <laughs> so the way to not get the challenge is to kill that thing before leaving. Anyway, so that's a silly little seep room. I had to have one, and that was the form that it took. I'm still the citizen until I get here. Then I revert to be thrown. Anyway, so all that's left is two more rooms in the north. So here I get to play as Gunthro. This room's kind of big and complicated. It has a lot of roles in it. Um, so when I went through all the interactions and made the spreadsheet that I did of what does what, I guess I kind of wanted to use all of the... Okay, so I wanted to have a room that explained all the nuances of player roles uh, the best that I could. And then I figured it didn't make much sense if I was explaining them in this hold to not use all of the things in this hold. So I wanted to use all of the roles that had unique behavior and all of the, the things that I explained about them here uh, in the puzzle rooms. So I basically ended up just throwing everything I, that I could into everywhere. This was the last, well, second last room that I built on this level. Uh, and it kind of just used all of the stuff that I hadn't used in other rooms. So a lot kind of got shoved in here. Anyway, um, so stuff that's going on. Got a few evil eyes to kill, a few water skippers, and a serpent. So not that much fighting to actually do in here. 
but a lot of complicated stuff in the way up front. I think I'm going to take this... No, I need a sword. I don't want to take the stick yet. Mimic can go here. Uh, this turns on fire Gun traps. Your name is Gunthro. That turns them off. So getting the Mimic out lets me just keep those off. Um, who needs a stick? What's the stick for again? Why do I need a stick? I remember why I need a stick. Uh, if a Mimic has a stick, he can help me get out of this trap because this pressure plate has no equivalent for turning off those fire traps. Those just stay on permanently. But with a Mimic... Um, with a Mimic, I can place a clone there and do something like this and do a multi-push so that I step into where the Mimic's going to push his stick and get out of there safely. So, I've got a clone now. And clone can do stuff. Mimic's doing stuff. I'll just ignore him for now. I need a roll here which can go over this potion and not drink it because I need to not be invisible for these eyes to be able to see me because they have to die in those hot tiles. And I haven't broken stealth yet, so I'd have to change rules for them to actually see me. Okay. Uh, let's kill some water skippers. Oh, right. So part of the fun of this room is playing as a water skipper. If I step in here, I can't actually move anymore because there's no water nearby. This one has water nearby, so it can move. Uh, then the Mimic's responsibility now is to push this water skipper out into another changing room so that I can become something that can move again. Um, sure, you go there, you go there. There we almost go. Alright, and I can be gone through again. A quirk of changing uh, player roles. I can be standing in this water or over a pit and be permanently okay. <laughs> uh, you won't actually fall into water or pits unless you're actually pushed or dropped off a bridge or something. Um, it's not enough to actually be in it. It's, it's the transition that kills you and changing roles doesn't count as a transition, basically. I think that's kind of a bug. So I made sure this room doesn't rely on that behavior. Anyway, uh, right, this orb has to be used to open that to get to that orb. These all need to be held. They get held with gel babies. To get gel babies in place, I use my clone here to herd them like this. So those are all in place. By the way, this mimic at this point, he's done his job. He can go onto this plate, which opens the way to the evil eye roll. I think there's some weird way in this room to actually skip this evil eye roll. I forget what it is, though. Does it involve... No, how would that work? I thought there was some minor break in here that made this unnecessary. But heck if I can remember how it worked now, so let's assume this is just not broken. <laughs> let's pretend. Whoops, that was premature. I need to use that orb first. You'll notice this tunnel doesn't have a use yet. You'll see what it's for eventually. Alright, so orb is used. Get rid of gel babies. And then this is where the evil eye comes in. Because I need something which can uh, kill on ormites. And come through cannot do that. And then this silly nuance. This whole structure here is made so that if I ever blow this squad horn... Uh, let's see, do I want to use this orb? Yes, I have to use the orb, but if I blow the squad horn, um, he spawns on hot tiles, can't go anywhere, uh, can't switch rolls to get out of the way, or he'll die. So you don't want to blow that horn. The horn's in the way. So you have to switch to a roll, which is unable to use uh, potions or horns, but can still walk over them. This is one of those things that I just sort of inserted here because I discovered it could happen, because you can walk over those before you step on a power token. Some monsters actually can't. Uh, the evil eye sees this as an obstacle. But Engineer can walk over it and can also use orbs. I'm, this is a part of the room I actually don't like very much, but I, I felt like I should include it because it was a mechanic that I found and I described it, so I thought, well, that has to show up in a room somewhere. <laughs> 
Anyway, that orb lets me back out. Also gives me access to a Wraithwing costume. So Wraithwing's role is really just to fly over that pit and nothing else. Uh, Gunthrow can talk to Health. Uh, that's how I get the Serpent out. He talks to Health with Bethro's voice, unfortunately. <laughs> Inactive clones can kill Serpents. And then the one final thing in this room is that if this evil eye steps on that, he's trapped forever. Um, oh, right, I remember how this worked. There was a way... There was a way to actually get through this entire room without ever breaking stealth, so I could step here, and since there was no monster aggression, I would choose a role other than gun throw. Since there was no monster aggression, this evil eye wouldn't wake up. That's the alternate way to do it that doesn't actually require this evil eye role. The way I meant to do it was to take the invisibility potion, finally, since you had avoided it earlier. Still useful for later in the room, and you can just kill that. So yeah, that's this room. And that's exit level. Not quite done yet, though. You may have noticed this green door here. Happens to be next to a cracked wall. So up here is another variant of that room. That's going to play out a little bit differently. Only three rolls this time. I get to start with all three. I get a Wraithwing, I get a gun throw, I get a decoy. Uh, this room, this was built fairly late. This was inspired by... Um, Insoluble, one of the testers' uh, solutions to this room. He did some very interesting stuff that didn't involve using this pressure plate uh, and showed me... Oh, right, and also I realized you can pick this up as a wraith wing without actually dropping the trapdoor. So I want a stick. Uh, I can't go through that again. Uh, I can't go through that because, again, monsters like wraith wings um, treat potions as obstacles when they can't drink them, as opposed to things like engineers treating them as just floor. Anyway, um, so, let's see, I believe, yeah, so a decoy... No, I can do this right now. Uh, evil eyes see decoys, because uh, a decoy's purpose is attracting monsters, they're never stealthed. Uh, but yeah, I can't drink that potion until I pick up a power token. Um, and I can't drink this potion either, so I would just die if I went there. So gun throw. Right, so what Insoluble showed me is that you can actually create a mimic in s with his stick inside gun throw here and get out like that. <laughs> so that's how you get out of that situation without a pressure plate to turn off the fire traps. Yeah, both of these just activate. Uh, these walls moved out a little bit more. So over here, I can't do exactly the same thing with the mimic that I did before. It involves some additional trickery. I mean, it's basically the same. I just create a wall using um, a uh, clone. So the clone becomes the wall instead of the actual wall. Uh, anyway, cool. So, got a clone, got a mimic. Um, somebody needs a sword, and it's the mimic, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, the mimic needs a sword. Uh, gun throw can make do with stick. In fact, he wants a stick. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, with a sword mimic. Uh, right, I can't get this potion because what I need to do is put stuff on uh, all of these pressure plates so that I can um, so that I can wake up those evil eyes. Uh, I can't kill that water skipper, actually. I took the stick too early. Let's not take that stick yet. Or it is the sword. Um, no, no, that would be fine. I can take it now. I can bring a decoy over here. So, hi, I'm a decoy. I have a stick. And I'm going to move that water skipper around. If this mimic weren't in my way, go away, mimic. Mind your own business. Don't kill me. Here, you... Find a new home out there. Uh, so that's a way to get a water skipper out of that situation, and I want to put him there. That gives me access to a powder keg, which is going to be useful for the mimic whoa, to blow himself up and also blow off the potion. 
why did I need to do that? Oh, right, because a water skipper, two water skippers need to be pushed through here onto these pressure plates. It's necessary to get rid of the potion. That has to happen before these evil eyes are awakened, so the potion has to be gone. So right, that's where the sword goes. You sacrifice the mimic with it. Now, this is pretty much just a simple matter of luring water skippers around, pushing them into the right places. I have not broken stealth, interestingly. That's fine. Uh, Gunthrow's only real purpose here is just to drink those two potions. Or actually just this potion, because everybody can drink a clone potion. <laughs> so Gunthrow, not the most useful uh, role here, interestingly. Alright, that's a water skipper. Um, this is almost what I need. There we go. That's a water skipper. Should be able to do this from this end. Okay, cool. Inactive clones will wake evil eyes if uh, evil eyes can see them normally. Uh, so that's what happened there. And there we go. Evil eyes are dead, so now I just have to kill the water skippers, which I can do with a wraith wing. Safe here because of the force arrows, and then I can fly off the gap like that. So yeah, looks similar to the room below. It shares some elements, but ends up playing out actually fairly differently. They're still alive. There we go. And that's it. And then this return path, uh, where the squad horn came in, I can actually... Right, because I'm a decoy... Uh, you have to exit as decoy here, it's the only option. I think... I'm pretty sure, yeah, okay, so this is another place. Let me see if I thought of this. I'm pretty sure I thought of this. <laughs> I'm gonna verify. Um, so that's how you would get out. If I would place this clone here... Go back into where I was... And let's see, I'm gun throw. I'm gonna place a clone here. I'm pretty sure I guarded against this. Yeah, it changes me to a decoy when I room transition there. That's another place where you can put a clone at the room edge. And I had to put special scripting here to make sure you couldn't escape as the wrong role. Because scripting in this room doesn't get a chance to change your role if you do that action. Anyway, yeah, so decoy hits the orb to get out of there does not My use name is uh no you're not your name is decoy uh does not use the squad horn so it doesn't kill his clone and wields a sword so he can get through the gel so that's how you escape from here and that's role play so yeah it was fun to make a player role level um lots of interesting game mechanics that don't get explored a whole lot i feel so yeah that's it for this level Let me get a Slayer Hook. I couldn't really think of what representation to use for the icon for the roleplay level. Slayer Hook was about the best I could do. That kind of implies it's a Slayer level, but... Uh, I don't know, I'd probably draw a Slayer with his hook here if I was doing that. Because, yeah, there's no... <laughs> an icon for changing player role is just doesn't seem like the most obvious thing to choose. So, Hook was about the best I could do. Alright, and that's four out of five levels. Take a seat in my chair again. Uh, next time we'll do the final level that I built up here, split personality, has to do with these elements. See you then!